part three of skills practice eight is going to be looking at how you make a selection based on color. And for this part three, we have uh, some images for you to choose from here. By clicking here, you can download one. I have downloaded this image and I've already renamed it and saved it as a Photoshop document, which you should do. And for the color range, rather than using one of these one of the selection tools, um, I'm actually going to use the select menu. So if I click here on the select menu, this option that's just about halfway down is color range. And by selecting color range, it will open up a dialog box where you can either um, make your selection based on sampled colors. If I click here, I get another drop down menu which I can select specific colors. I can also um, choose highlights, midtones, or shadows, skin tones, and out of gamut colors. I'm going to use sampled colors. I'm going to select the color of the flower um, and have that be my selection for this image. So with the sampled colors, I have a color sampler tool here, this eyedropper tool. And I'm going to go over here and click. And if you once you click, you'll notice that um, the area here that appears white, that's going to be your selection. And if I just kind of move around and click in different places, you see how that area changes. So it's just selecting based on that color. So here, even though it's the same color essentially, it varies in luminance and also saturation. So what I'm going to do rather is I'm going to add, once I click here, I'm going to add to that. I can either hold down the shift key and I get an add symbol. I can also choose this eyedropper tool to add to it. And then what I'll what I what will happen when I click is it will add and continue to add to the selection. Um, add based on not only that color, that initial color, but the colors, each color that I'm clicking on, it will add to that. So um, with that done, that looks like a pretty decent selection here. I can increase this by moving the fuzziness slider up a bit. I'll move it up to about 70 there. And it looks like it really has done a nice job of selecting the color of the flower here. So once I'm satisfied with that, um, and once you're satisfied, you'll go ahead and push OK, and then you'll actually see your selection here. So the whole idea behind this skills practice in part three um, is to not only select a color, but change the color once you've made that selection. Um, before I do that, I'm actually going to do something that I'm going to advocate. Um, it, I'm going to save the selection. I'll go ahead and call this flower something simple and to change this color and again this just in case anything goes wrong here I still have the selection that I can easily grab again I'm going to go here to the adjustment layer and I'm going to choose the hue saturation adjustment layer so here I have a hue slider so this is a color slider and with that selection it's only going to influence that color that's been selected so I can change the color of that selection. I kind of am enjoying a more red flower rather than a pink flower. Um, so a nice somewhat subtle change here um, for this flower. So here you would want to save your work and for the skills practice you want to make sure that you upload the PNG file to show your work.